Hey, what up guys? Coming at you with another video today. This one, however, hit a bit different though. It's really a heartbreaking story about an incident that just occurred not too long ago in Atlanta that involved a local rapper who goes by the name Germ, who actually saw his girlfriend get kidnapped and taken away. This story takes a dark turn a couple hours later when the police finally found out what happened to her. This one was a tough one to hear about and it truly shows how messed up this world is right now. Before we start, if you're a fan of the channel, you already know what it is. Before we start the video, make sure to leave a like and if you would like to join this month's giveaway of one of these items on the screen, then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and watch this video to the end to comment the hidden keyword. Good luck. Without any more hesitation, let's get into it. It was in the early hours of August 13th, 2021 when a woman who had been bartending that night in the midtown area of Atlanta finally ended her shift. As she was leaving work, she said her goodbyes to co-workers and friends. She didn't realize that this would be the last time any of them would ever see her again. Having said her goodbyes, she was all set to go home, so she got into a car and hit the road. As she began to approach her home, she actually made a phone call to her boyfriend Jerry aka Germ. The two lived together so it is assumed that she was just calling him to let him know that she was about to be home and stuff like that. As her short 15 minute drive home came to an end, she began to pull into the driveway of their home. It was at this point that Germ had been looking out the window waiting for her to get home. What happened next would shock anyone who found themselves in a similar situation. And it's something that Germ is likely never to forget. As Germ watched his girlfriend pull in and proceed to get out of her car, he saw another vehicle pull up. Outside of that car stepped a man who appeared to be wearing a security shirt. As the man approached his girlfriend, he pulled out a gun and placed it to her head. He then began to tell her what to do, which ultimately ended up with her being forced into his vehicle. Once she was secured inside, the man was quick to get into the car himself and drive off. Germ couldn't believe his eyes. He was in shock. The first thing he did was to make a call to the police. At around 5 a.m., Germ called the police and began to describe what he had just witnessed to the 911 operator. He told them everything he saw and was clearly panicked as anyone would be. Now, like anyone that was in that situation would do, Germ's first instinct was to try to get in his car and drive after the man who had just abducted his girlfriend. But as he pointed out in the 911 call, he wasn't able to do that. For some reason, his car had been blocked in so he couldn't pursue them in any way. His last hopes were crushed as he tried to pull up to the location of her phone in order to track her while he was on the phone with the cops. But that didn't yield any results as it would seem that she dropped her phone when she was approached and the phone had just been left in the driveway. All that Germ could do now is sit and wait for the police while most likely imagining the horrible things that could be happening to the woman he loved. There wouldn't be any word about it until an hour later when the police received another call. This time it was about shots fired in a residential neighborhood. It was around 6 a.m. when 911 received the call and police were quick to make their way to the scene near Lakewood Avenue in Terrace Way. The address immediately led police to believe that the shooting had something to do with the kidnapping right away due to the fact that the address of the shooting was only five minutes away from where Germ's girlfriend was taken. As officers arrived on the scene, they began to close the area and conduct a search. The search was a fruitless effort when they turned up nothing. No witnesses could be accounted for, there was no body, no shell casings, nothing, no sign of any shooting. This seemed odd though, so the police continued to scour the scene and expand the search area a bit. Fast forward a few hours later, now it's 9.55 in the morning and the police are still searching for anything related to the kidnapping and the gunshots that had been reported when they get a third and final 911 call. In the call that was recorded by the 911 operators, you could hear a man who had been out walking his dog describe something that would probably haunt him for years to come. In the heartbreaking call, the man says that he sees a Caucasian woman laying face down on the ground, and you hear the panic in his voice. The operator lets him know that help is on the way and begins to ask him about the woman. Things like, is she awake? To which the man responds, no, and as he approaches the body, you can hear the pain creeping up. He utters the words, she's dead, and begins to describe blood around the upper body and the fact that the woman's mouth and nose were directly against the ground. This is when he says, Lord, that's somebody's baby, and it's enough to tear you to pieces. 
Mariam Abdelard was 27 years old when she was kidnapped shortly after finishing her bartending shift. She was shot and killed about an hour after being taken with her body being left to be discovered in front of an abandoned house near its mailbox. May she rest in peace. At first, there was no suspects in mind, though the police were searching frantically for any shred of evidence to point them in the right direction. This all changed a few hours later in the city that's located about an hour away from where the body was discovered. Apparently, police had made an attempt to stop a man in an SUV for a driving violation that ended up in a police chase. The man in the SUV ended up crashing into another car and was ultimately arrested after being airlifted to an Atlanta medical center. Once police found out the identity of the driver, he immediately became a suspect in the murder of Mariam Abdullah. The man was ID'd by police as Demarcus Brinkley, a 27-year-old with a history so dark you're finna be wondering how this man was still walking around. Demarcus had just finished doing time in prison last year and was released in November of 2020. After hearing all of his criminal history, many people were wondering why he was let out in the first place. Back in 2012, he found himself in lockup after soliciting oral sex in exchange for payment with an undercover police officer. However, this was nothing compared to what was to come. After being released in 2012, DeMarcus found himself in trouble again. This time, it was for aggravated assault. DeMarcus apparently came at a man with a knife and slashed him up a bit. Less than a month later, in July of 2012, a woman reported that DeMarcus had done the unthinkable. He attacked and raped her 7-year-old daughter. Upon further investigation, it was quickly discovered that he actually had a previous conviction of molestation dating back to when he was in his juvenile years. Though he had allegedly been attending counseling, it wasn't enough for DeMarcus. The mother of the seven-year-old apparently left the child alone with DeMarcus for some unknown reason, and the child describes what happened to her is too much for anybody to read, speak, or hear. But it's clear that this man was a monster and something should have been done about him a long time ago. This wasn't all though, it turns out a year later, DeMarcus was caught by a woman while he was trying to rape her daughter. A week later, police finally arrested DeMarcus. After being charged with multiple counts of aggravated child assault and child molestation, it's wild that this man was ever allowed to see the light of day again. On Tuesday, August 17, 2021, DeMarcus was taken to Fulton County Jail where he was booked and charged with the murder of Mariam Abdullah. He was ultimately charged with aggravated assault, kidnapping as well as false imprisonment and murder. There's a chance that he'll be facing death by execution, which is something that many people believe is long overdue. All I can say after hearing this story is my condolences to Marion's family, as well as Germ. May she rest in peace. I hope this monster, Demarcus, gets everything he deserves and nothing less. It just goes to show you how scary of a place this world is. You never know what kind of darkness lies in someone until it comes out. What you think, should DeMarcus get the death penalty for all the crimes he has committed and all of the other people he has hurt? Be sure to let us know in the comments section. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching and as always be safe out there. We out. Hey you. Yeah you. You like the video? Great. We got another one for you that we guarantee you'll like. And all you have to do is click on the screen. It's free and without any hidden fees. But you have to click on fast because this message will self-destruct in 5 seconds.